Today in this video, I'm giving you the best MLB The Show 24 hitting tips that are gonna take your swings from this <laughs> to something a little bit more like this. As a six-time top 50 player in MLB The Show 23, I'm already 7-0 in ranked seasons, batting 588, and I also already have two flawlesses under my belt. I've used all the tips I'm about to provide you guys to compete with some of the world's best players in MLB The Show. Some of the sections we're gonna cover in this video include equipment, settings and camera, overall approach at the plate, swing type and swings, as well as what you can do to practice. So without further ado, let's start hitting perfect perfects. For the first topic we're gonna cover, that includes the equipment for your Xbox, as well as the equipment you could get for your controller. And since I am an Xbox user, I use a Power A wired controller. These Power A controllers are literally like 30 to $35 at GameStop, and they provide the least latency for all controllers in MLB The Show. One of the ways you could tell bad latency on a non-wired controller is when you're using pinpoint pitching, when you try to slam the pitch down to finish the pitch, sometimes it'll only go halfway. That is because there's some kind of bug on wireless controllers that allows them to do that. But on Power A controllers, pinpoint is 10 times smoother and you'll never run into that issue. So now equipment for the controller itself that I use personally. There are two extra pieces of equipment that I add to my controller that I highly recommend, which are control freaks. Control freaks are essentially an addition you could add to your controller that help you control your PCI a little bit better. And the ones I personally recommend are the ones at Concave In, which are the two I have in my hand right now, either the Red Infernos or the Black Galaxies. Another control freak product that I highly recommend are precision rings. As you can see on the stick on the left side of your screen, I have a black precision ring on at the moment and these allow you not to slam your PCI as much which obviously is a huge help if you are prone to slamming your PCI like I once was. And also, quick plug-in, if you want 12% off your Control Freak orders, use code TROTTYBOY13 at checkout to get yourself 12% off. So, a little overview on the equipment. Wired controllers, in my opinion, are the best. Control Freaks are essential in helping control your PCI a little bit better. And Precision Rings will help you stop slamming your PCI around the zone. Next up, let's talk about the best settings and camera options that you could use to hit. First of all, if you are going to become a better MLB The Show player, and that is what you want to do, I recommend switching your hitting interface to zone hitting. Yes, PCI hitting is the most difficult hitting to master, but once you get the hang of it, it's going to give you the most consistent and best results possible. As we move down my settings list, personally, my favorite PCI in the game by far that I have used for the past two years includes a very simple PCI. First, my PCI center is bat. My inner and outer PCIs are on none. Color of my PCI is cyan, and the opacity of my PCI is 50%. That makes the PCI look a little bit something Something like this right here. Why I think the bat PCI is the best PCI out of all of them. As you go through different difficulties, the bat PCI does not change in size. So that little dot in the middle of the bat literally always stays that size on any difficulty you play on. Even if you're on beginner, all the way up to legend, that circle is the same size. And this is also just something I find beneficial because when you see PCIs shrink or enlarge, in my opinion, it always just got me thinking a little bit too much. So having something that is consistently the same size for my PCI helped me more than all the others. But of course, at the end of the day, PCI is all preference. So another PCI that I really like, if you guys do want to try it out, we are going to flip our PCI center over to diamonds. Now adding on a PCI inner to wedge, our PCI outer stays at none. Our PCI color now goes to yellow and the opacity goes up just by a little bit up to 70 percent making our pci look a little bit something like this and what a beautiful swing like i said before pci is purely up to your preference so whatever pci works best for you go for it but i will say do your best to try and keep it simple because if you load into a game and your pci looks a little bit something like this you might find it a little bit difficult to actually focus on the pitch never mind don't listen to me don't use this pci I'm not even showing you the settings. Now let's move into what camera settings I think are best for you guys. The best hitting view, I would say, is one of two options. Hitting view number one is Strike Zone, my favorite camera view in the whole game. And the other option, in my opinion, that you could use is Strike Zone High. Like I said, I think Strike Zone is absolutely the best camera. Using Strike Zone just allows you to pick up pitches a little bit easier and allow you to get a really good feel on taking pitches outside the Strike Zone too. Sometimes when your camera is too far away, it's hard to pick up seams, pitches, and you're more prone to swing at a lot more stuff outside the zone. But at the end of the day, camera is also another preference thing. Whatever works best for you, it's up to you. But my recommendation recommendations are you use only a bat pci in the center as well as using the strike zone camera next 
Let's talk about approach. Now that we've talked about everything before hitting the actual baseball, let's finally talk about actually swinging the bat and our approach. First off, it's gonna sound very redundant, but the number one thing you're gonna wanna do is making sure you are ready for fastballs and sinkers. Fastballs and sinkers inside are going to be prominent no matter what level you play. And knowing that the sinker is arguably the best pitch in the whole game, you have to be ready for your opponent to throw it because that is what they're going to want to resort to 99% of the time. And while I say fastballs and sinkers inside should be watched out for, let's make sure we understand one thing. If we are same side hitting, and what I mean by same side hitting is there is a righty on the mound and a righty batter or a lefty on the mound and a lefty batter. This is where we need to be ready to attack sinkers and fastballs inside the most. If I'm facing an opponent and they are chucking sinkers inside, one little mental trick I try to help myself out with is my thumb pressure on the controller goes a little bit slightly inside just to make sure I'm ready for it mentally. So as you can see right now, these little dots are popping up on the screen when I press the left stick in, and that is called the PCI anchor system. What you could do with this PCI anchor system is you could start your PCI anywhere in the zone that you'd like. For example, if I wanted to start my PCI up and in, all I would do is press the left stick in, go up to the top and release to where no matter what, if I'm not pressing the stick, my PCI is up in the top left. For some reason, if I wanted to set up at the bottom of the zone, I would press the left stick in go to the bottom of the zone and release and then my PCI would stay there for that pitch. If you do want to try out the PCI anchor and see if you actually like it, the one I recommend starting out with is the low and end PCI anchor. The low and end PCI anchor will definitely help you out with sinkers low and end, as well as reacting to any inside pitch, whether it's low or high. Personally, what I do is I do not use the PCI anchor. I keep my PCI down the middle no matter what, and I give myself of a little bit of a PCI waggle to try and help get my timing down. Essentially, what I mean by a waggle is I am barely moving my thumb around the center just to try and get a timing mechanism to time up the pitcher. PCI anchor is going to be one of those things as well that's purely up to your discretion on whether you like it or not. Personally, I'm not a big fan of it as I keep my PCI down the middle, but there are some people out there that love it. So give it a try yourself and see if you like it. When we also talk about same side hitting righty, righty, lefty, lefty matchups, other important pitches to look out for are cutters and sliders away. Sinkers and cutters, in my opinion, are the best two pitches in the game. So having that approach to be on the lookout for either one of them are going to take you a long way. So I've set this difficulty up to legend and I set it to cutters outside. And this pitch right here gets people out so many times, including myself, a lot of times because it's such a good pitch you are going to do that right there a lot sometimes especially if it's perfectly thrown having the mental awareness to tell yourself i'm looking for sinkers inside and cutters outside when pitchers have both of those options should be the number one thing you always look for in an at bat when you also have this mentality once you start getting the hang of it you can also start seeing which sinkers are going to go too far inside and which cutters are going to go just a little bit too far outside one last approach tip i want to talk about this year is the slight gameplay difference that i've noticed in the first few days is that we are in the 2019 era of baseball and balls will fly i've seen exit velos get nearly up to 120 miles per hour with some hitters which also makes a lot more ballparks playable which is a good thing but with that information try to get under the ball obviously i'm not saying slam the pci to the bottom of the zone every time or you're gonna pop it up but the goal of your swings this year should really be focused on hitting perfect perfects that are slightly under the baseball unless hitting gets nerfed or something else happens to where that is not viable at this time you should be looking to get your perfect perfects like i said slightly under the baseball because the balls will fly at about 90 percent of fields that is not named polo grounds or forbes field the last thing i will say about approach is make sure you do your best to be patient sometimes i run into it myself where i want to get in such a rhythm and swing first pitch no matter what sometimes that don't work out too well for me if you feel like you have to sometimes take a strike or two it's very easy to get in a bad rhythm in this game where you start consistently swinging at stuff outside the zone first pitch second pitch third pitch where you don't really get to work counts at all because don't forget you want to work counts because you want your pitcher's energy bar to go way down the lower your opponent's pitcher's energy bar and confidence bar is the bigger your pci gets and the harder you hit the ball next up let's talk about different swing types that are available in MLB The Show 24. Obviously, this is an Xbox controller. 
I play Xbox. But all these buttons in their respective location for PlayStation controllers are going to stay the same. A is going to be your normal swing. B is going to be your contact swing. Y is going to be for bunting. And X is going to be your power swing. And there is only one thing I have to say about this topic. Only use normal swing. In my opinion, I think if you power swing or contact swing, it is only going to put you at a disadvantage. Because power swing will tremendously shrink your PCI, making it almost impossible to check swing and get foul balls. And on the other hand, while a contact swing increases your PCI and increases the chances to get foul balls, your exit velo will drop drastically, making it to where if you hit a perfect perfect even with somebody with 125 power with a contact swing, it's probably not even going 100 off the bat. So please, with this knowledge, only use normal swing. Next up, let's talk about swings of different players and what you should be looking out for. In my opinion, the number one thing you should be looking out for somebody's specific swing is that they have an early leg kick and overall their stance is not too distracting. For example, we're using Matt Olson right here in this practice pitch. And one thing we're gonna be on the lookout for, he has an early leg kick and not too much movement, something that I would highly recommend. And now we throw Ronald Acuna into the mix. Same thing with Acuna, a very early leg kick and a very simple motion. It's not going to distract you too much. For example, Willie Mays has a 99 overall card already this year. But for anybody who's ever used Willie Mays, you guys know he is on top of the plate and it feels nearly impossible to hit inside pitches. Swings and stances like that could ruin cards. And I don't like using those cards where I have to make a mental note about their swing that can affect my approach on what I'm looking for from a pitcher. Finally, let's put all these things together and talk about how you could practice getting better. It might sound really lame, but I seriously think the number one thing you could do in this game is just play. That means booting up ranked, battle royale, and events to really get a feel of online play and how your players in Diamond Dynasty do play. Or if you're an offline player in Diamond Dynasty or in Road to the Show, make sure you turn the difficulty up higher to Hall of Fame and Legend. Getting those reps in will only make you a better player. Just like anything in life, the more hours you put into it, the more you're going to master it. Another feature MLB The Show has is a mode called Custom Practice. The one thing I will say about Custom Practice is that it has no online latency what i mean by that is in offline custom practice there is no delay whatsoever when you hit a that is when you swing in online there is ever so slightly a little bit of lag to where when you hit the a button it is not zero millisecond response time in online what i recommend in custom practice is going through teams finding hitters you want to use and on the other side finding pitchers rather they be on historical teams or current mlb teams that you have trouble with and making sure you play against those guys if you do want to play in custom practice the first thing i recommend you doing is going into your hitting difficulty and changing it to legend what i recommend you doing if you have never played legend before and overall want to get better at hitting through custom practice is changing the pitch frequency to only fastballs or sinkers changing the pitch location to only down the middle and just start getting your timing down legend timing is very difficult as many people may know so seeing how fast those pitches come in is going to be very frightening for a lot of first-time players or players that don't play legend for me i have probably played way too many games of legend so custom practice is just one thing i have moved on from but it is one thing I did start with. And as we've talked about something earlier in this video, sinkers inside and cutters outside are prominent in any difficulty you play on online. So find yourself a pitcher that throws a sinker, just like Marcus Stroman. Find a same side batter like I'm using, like George Springer. Make sure you highlight all the inside zones. Having the mindset that you know a sinker is coming from Marcus Stroman inside or any other sinker pitcher will only help you translate hitting those sinkers inside to online play in Diamond Dynasty. As you start playing the game more and moving up the ranks the biggest transition of hitting is always the timing pitches are faster pitches are nastier and it's hard to get a good grasp on how to take pitches and how to successfully hit pitches comfortably so in custom practice like i said you could do exactly that you could see sinkers inside every single pitch you could see cutters outside every single pitch or face any pitcher you might be struggling with or use hitters that you want to learn their swing better and get their timing down i think jumping into custom practice is a great option for those who don't play legend frequently or if you don't even want to put the difficulty on legend you could put it on all-star speeds that is used in game modes like dr and events so that covers everything in this video today regarding hitting tips and mlb the show 24 like i said it's going to take time the first year i seriously started playing online a lot in mlb the show was mlb the show 21 while i did make world series that year the first time i even made a thousand rating was deep into mlb the show 22 making those jumps as an overall player and hitter in mlb the show is not easy the biggest thing you could do for yourself is get reps rather it be in custom practice or just going head first into online play i hope everything i've talked about here today can help you and your efforts in ranked seasons and everything else in mlb the show regarding hitting if you guys have not done so already make 
make sure you guys hit the subscribe button and make sure to like comment and share this video as well and if you ever want to see me hitting live in mlb the show make sure you guys follow the twitch trot on twitch and that link is down in the description if you guys made it this far i wish you good luck and your efforts on becoming a better hitter in mlb the show 24.